All right, welcome everyone. We are Semblance of Sanity. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. And we're here for JoJo's, JoJo's Bizarre, Bizarre Adventure, Adventure Part 5, Episode, episode 19. 19. All They're right. going into the water. They're jumping off a bridge, yep. being chased by uh, Giaccio with his stand White Album. Mm -hmm. This crazy, crazy, uh, is obsessed Italian man yeah. is, uh, uh -huh. is quite the fearsome stand user. Yes. And he has ice armor, too. Uh, yes, which I'm a big fan of. But this, this, uh, this ploy that they're doing doing um i really hope it pays off because otherwise it could go very 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 badly right i'm guessing they're gonna have some way in which the fight will maybe continue under the bridge but not in the water so yeah or something maybe like that. something like that because because going into the water seems like a bad idea it's a really bad idea unless uh -huh. unless Jorno goes full aquaman with water bending because of the microorganisms in the water or like you know, or or he make or he makes a you know a bunch of sharks or something like that or well he needs equivalent know. you know kind of general like you know size you know stuff in order to do that and that that's got to be a thing so because um, otherwise because yeah, otherwise yeah yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um we've got ourselves in this situation though because we've got our our rendezvous we've got our our mission here but uh yeah let's uh let's see maybe what they do more with the the boss as well because they seem to be slowly uh introducing us to him with that scene in the previous episode so that's very true yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so y'all without further ado let's get into this <laughs> all right here they go okay the Okay, okay. Oh. Oh, Crap. that's not good. So is he gonna make like a living creature that will be able to take Mr. away really quickly or? Oh, no, I can't. I guess it's right there, so. Gotcha. All right. <laughs> Okay, okay. Yeah, he still has all this water. Oh! 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 Oh, that is oh, just yeah. brutal! No. Yep, yes, yep. it definitely it was. It very much was. Alright. Okay, nah, so how do they get out of this exactly? Yumi o shi, but it's a keru. Omatai se dame no shini. Marude o shisebe surete. Toko ni mo ni gara ni nai. Isasura akagi nagara. Takedo akira me nai. Nareki no soku ni umareta kibou no keratachi kito kono te de mitsuke da susa sekai o kaeru tame ni Fighting gold, jibun no uchiyo, shinjita mono dake ga itsu kagake yakeru, inochi no kageri, kami ni mo sakarai, takatsu suzukeru, fukutsu no tamashi tachi yo. Fighting gold. Woo. Okay. Yeah, this is a problem. Why stop at plants, though? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Maybe make wow. a bunch of bombardier beetles or something? Is he gonna burn it or something? Oh, 
これでおめえは助かった What? What? No, no way. Oh my god. <laughs> yep, 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 crap. And now, Jorno, go, 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 do your thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, crap, crap. <laughs> oh! Oh, he transformed it! Dang! Okay. Just so we had living objects that he could... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow! Oh! That wow. deadly accuracy! Wow. No, no, definitely uh -huh. not. Let's heal up quickly. Yep, yep. A few dozen seconds, that's... That's a lot of rounds of combat there. If and you'll find out by seeing underwater. Wow, okay. Nice. That's his weak point. It's always the back of the neck. Yep. Okay, here we go! Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Did he just miss? No. Oh, right, 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 right. Making right. him look down. Making him look down. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh. Let's do it. Number one and number two. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh! 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 No! Crap! Jeez. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh crap. Alright. Alright, alright. We need to get our healer over there, pronto. So what are you gonna do, Jorno? Oh! Oh! 
Oh! What? Oh! With this music! Oh. Oh crap, this could be his death, Jacob. Sudden backstory. I know, but... <笑>つまりお前はとんでもない銃の才能と精神力の持ち主ということになる。インディード。お前のようなお前のような男は無所の中では2年と無事ではいられんだろう。ついてこい。近くにうまいリストランテがある。I <笑> really like this track. いいクイップリだな。ここはブルスケットも行ける。まだ食べられるか。ああ。やはり5つにするか。せっかくだ。俺も付き合おう。かしこまりました。で、話の続きだが。オーケーだ。あんたとはうまくやっていけ。オルチェも奢ってくれ。この店に苺のケーキはあるかい?ははは。ナイス。ナイス。オッケー。
In his neck. Jeez! Dude, but he's, he's got shot so much. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, I got chills there. Whoa. No, don't sleep. Don't sleep, buddy. Don't sleep. It's not your time. Come on, come on. Go on. <laughs> You're a healer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right, I'm plugging things up by turning... Yeah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Wow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my oh. god. Oh. Wow. Okay, post credit scene, okay. <laughs> I thought I thought, you know, magnets in part three was Mmm, but <laughs> See just Jonah needed a, a a big strong mister in his life, you know. <laughs> Freaking you is all I need tonight. I need your vibe. Be gentle, Jonah! <laughs> he gives life after all. Yeah, yeah. I actually thought he was going to leverage the fact that he's like, hey, these things are going to transform into this, but if my stand and I ever, you know, pass from this right. world, they'll revert back or something. I'm yeah, pretty that's sure what they I get thought it was. I'm pretty sure they get transferred transformed permanently. Mm -hmm. But he could leverage that by saying, now you are loyal to me. Well, theoretically, Otherwise, eventually, you know. the cells would regrow anyways, and then it would be not... So maybe, like, given enough time, like, sure. maybe that is how it works, but given enough time, it'll just get regrown anyways. Possibly, yeah. Especially if it's the actual things themselves. Right. Uh-huh. Which just shows how ridiculously busted gold oh, experience yeah. is. <laughs> Creating life. Well, there you go. Think about freaking you. Mmm. Well. Mmm. Okay. Okay, hold up a minute. Uh, oh my god. Well, Mista and Jorno teaming up together. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's almost as terrifying as what Narancia thought he saw. <laughs> <laughs> I, that that fight was um was absolutely crazy. It, like it was crazy and it, it 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 was one that I was actually having trouble tracking for a little bit there because they kept doing things to slow down certain aspects of the fight. Uh-huh. Where it's like, oh, no, Mista is sitting on the thing near the water. And then it's like, oh, he's talking what he should do. But then he jumps back into the water and then yeah. he finds his air hole, which is like, okay, that's actually brilliant. Yep, okay, yep. that's good. Uh -huh. But then Jorno's sitting on the car all this time healing himself, obviously. But but sure. like, <laughs> like but, oh not interfering with the fight really much at all. Which, granted, it, you know, gives Mista the chance to be awesome and, and showcase all that and whatnot. Um, and, it, and it does keep it in the one-on-one -on -one aspect that uh, that Araki yeah. is so fond of. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I, I totally get it. I, I just, if anything, it felt like everything was just a delaying point for the dramatic, amazing finale of the fight. Yes. Which was Mista realizing that, oh my God, Jorno can heal me. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I take, you know, temporary yeah. damage. As long as I don't right. die, uh-huh. I can keep fighting with one hit point. Yep. Like, the difference between 120 HP and 1 HP is zero. It is Once you're bleeding nothing. out, you're bleeding out, so yeah. might as well go go full ham Go about all it. Yeah. the way. Uh-huh. Also, I love the genius of the ricochet point for the pull was actually not just to ricochet it off of the pull to hit the spot, but that was there primarily to create a point, a blade, by which he would knock him onto that later because he... All he needs to do is enough bludgeoning damage with the bullets in order to push him into it. Which, as a gunfight goes, <laughs> like, 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 the fact that this is basically a gunfight against uh-huh. an armor wielder yep, of yep, sorts, an uh-huh. armor elementalist. Right. It's perfect because there's so many, like, ridiculous rules about gunfights all the time. It's like story totally. rules. Oh, and yeah. this one just is like, yeah, screw those rules. Yeah. Like Right. <laughs> and and whenever and whenever people are in any kind of armor plating or whatever that can shrug off the bullets, yeah. then you need to have it be something where there's some spike somewhere that for some reason has more penetrating power than the actual bullet. <laughs> How that works, you know, whatever. It's all it's always rule of cool. Well, but w- well, no, well, no. There was a point here that I think they made that was rather interesting. Was that he wasn't actually um, he wasn't actually uh, um, turning on the the bit here with with ice one hundred percent of the time. There was uh, times right, where yes. it was liquid, which was allowing him to breathe. Yep. Just naturally. Yeah. And when it was liquid because mm-hmm. there was no bullets coming back towards there, then the blade thing could sink through because it was still right. a hole. Oh, right. Yes, exactly. So exactly. it wasn't penetrating the armor at yep. any point. Yep. Uh huh. It just yeah. needed to be perfectly exactly in this specific precise point. Oh, yeah. Which is <laughs> even more ridiculous than the actual bit with, you know, the numbers doing the reflecting because right. that's something we've already seen in the past. Yeah, yeah. But exactly. the idea that they would manipulate the bullets or Mista would fire the bullets in such a way as to, to push, manipulate him to manipulate him to push yeah. him into a specific precise right. that's like kill shot that's <laughs> that's like doing <laughs> like beating some crazy video game um and you're controlling the controller with chopsticks or something like right right like like that's that's absolutely insane <laughs> um, um oh my god the violence in this episode though was oh, off the charts though oh with, man with, the hand part just, just freezing off. Yep. Like, that I mean, was so just ugh, ugh. nasty. The, the thing is, I'm really glad, though, that it did that because that's what's really terrifying about, you know, if you have someone with ice powers. Mm-hmm. We're squishy meat sacks that don't like the cold. Nope. Yeah. Jorno's hand just shatters right yep. off because, yep. of course, it would. Yep. Right. Which also is, yeah, again, a great way to have him be be holed up there when when Mista continues. But like, yeah, uh, the human body is very, very fragile. Right. And and it doesn't take a lot in order to um, mess it up. So right. even like the things of like Giorno slamming his hand on the ice to like cause it to bleed like crazy. Now, that amount of pressurized blood, eh, you know, maybe that's a bit stretching it. But the idea that, yeah. Bludgeoning damage is a thing. You, you, if you were to slam your hand hard enough on the ice, it was already ice, like somewhat torn apart because of right, the exactly. unfinished healing process. I guess you were going through for it. Yeah. Then yeah, yeah, it's it'll pretty, it'll pretty definitely nasty. mess it up. Um, yeah. But we yeah. we got ourselves basically the also the completion of Mista's storyline with regards to his yes. backstory, mm-hmm. and that he believes that destiny is predetermined. And while there might be points in your past Mm -hmm. that caused you some detours or what have you yeah you're still going to end up in roughly the same spot anyway right now what's what's kind of interesting about that is that mista was the one that kind of had his choice robbed from him via the way that these people you Mm -hmm. know accosted him in his youth now he did choose to uh you know fire back after they shot at him all those times and missed right (laughs) <laughs> they missed uh you know <laughs> oh yeah um but the fact that he went and killed them all then ended up getting you know 15 to 30 yep Bujarati ends up basically setting him free mm-hmm. 
And immediately, immediately just upon the guy serving him some food and realizing that, you know, there's others other than him. Right. He goes, I'm in. I'm in, yep. I'm in immediately. Uh-huh. And what's 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 really cool about that is that he really just wanted he really just wanted that. He wanted a place where he could be along and, yeah. and figure that whole thing yep. out. Figure this whole kind of fate destiny thing out uh-huh. with other people involved. And uh there we go. Yep. There we go. And the the background yeah. music that they had in this episode in both in the hype parts but also in the in the, in the quiet, quiet moments, parts, you know, yeah. with with me still, you know, seeing the others, you know, come up to the table and it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. All right, this is it. Yeah. Um that that was just wonderful. Yeah. Also, I got to say as a as a storytelling structure, I really like the structure of introduce a character, give a little bit of their backstory give more of their backstory that's sort of like the final bit of their introduction when they're in an intense situation that makes you think they're going to die, right? Because Mm -hmm. even if you don't necessarily think they're going to die, that is the, we know that formula, even if, even if you don't know that you know that formula, right? Right. That, That the sudden backstory for a side character equals horrible, tragic death, right? So, and, and, and in this part, it's been done so many times. Right. Right? It's been done many times. Yes. And it gets us each time. Now, a little bit less each time, That's granted, true. because, That's true. you know, it's they've done it before, right? And especially with their proximity to Giorno. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The Yeah. Uh-huh. But, but still gets us really good. And I, I, I love genuinely that. thought he could have died here. Yeah, he could have. Like, mm-hmm. like, I didn't think he was going to. But if he did die, I was like, yeah, that's a possibility. Like, right. And, and I, I just, I love that because, because it's a way to take tension that, because in a lot of ways, like, okay, how do you make the middle of a story interesting? Right? Because the beginning is the beginning. You're introducing everything. Everything's fresh and new and all that stuff. And you're setting everything up. And then the end is the end. You have the climactic finale and you can, right. You can do a lot of things that you can't do in the middle because it's the finale. Right. 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 We haven't actually gotten to the finale of the middle yet though. Like uh, we're still in the middle sure. of the middle. Well, okay. Yeah. But regardless, okay. the point is, is that it's the middle, right? right. So yes. how do you make it interesting? And you know, how do you make it so that these, these stand users for one feel important, not just like the the stand users in say the part three, right? Where where it's like, okay, there's just gonna be another stand user, right? Right. So we have them as a group and all that stuff. They have a specific objective. Yeah. And then we're gonna go through them and maybe we'll end up fighting the boss too, you know, probably. Um, and that'll be pretty much the part, I'm I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. But the fact that we are able to have all this additional added tension through the extra introduction of these characters that should be mistaken as character death like flags that makes the middle which normally you kind of have to like trick the the audience into thinking that it could be the end you know right it's a really effective way of doing that and i love it yeah because a lot of times the middle will drag for stories uh yeah and and specifically with regards to this encounter here uh misa basically taking all the bullets we've seen joe bros and you mm-hmm. know, main characters just shed blood like it's nothing. <laughs> yeah. And given that we have an actual healer, even I would say uh-huh. not as much as uh, you know, Josuke, but but a, a pretty a stem cell supplier. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, a healer. Yeah. Essentially, uh, having this situation where we realize that Mista is a character one that is ultimately not Jorno. Yes. So he can right. die here mm-hmm. and have it mean something because of his resolve, because of him yep. doing this self-sacrifice bit for mm-hmm. Jorno. But Jorno set him up and saying, no, this, this yeah. result, we don't need self-sacrifice here, we need resolve. And those are not yep. the same thing. Mm-hmm. And what I what I like about that is that this resolve ended up being one of trust. Yes. Specifically with regards to Jorno. And then uh, at the end of this whole thing, mm-hmm. uh, Mista mentions that uh, Jorno kind of felt even more like a capo than Bucciarati did because yep. he stirred him to action and he then fully trusted in Giorno because of he mm-hmm. knows what his ability can do. But, again, taking the backstory bit, there's a nice little parallel that happens here through yeah. this. And that is that... That is that when uh, his backstory happened, that was because, uh, well, a very unique thing happened with Mista. His fate, as he saw it, was predetermined. Yes. He got shot at. However many times, 
did not get hit by any of them. Yep. What did he do here in this bit here? But mm -hmm. basically let all the bullets hit, hit him. him yeah. Because he knew his fate was predetermined. Right. Yeah. It's the it's the aspect of where you're not trusting in yourself, you're trusting in something else outside you, right. something beyond you. Mm -hmm. And Jorno basically became that, almost like this harbinger divine being coming in with theme music and and yeah. freaking Giaccio is just like this is this is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way this should happen. And it's like yeah. I'm sorry. It's 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 all useless and whatever. Muda, muda, muda. Yeah, and then he just deletes yeah. him from existence. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. I love it. It all it all works really well. And yeah, I I was like you know kind of following a little bit with the uh, the beginning parts of the fight that they had in this episode. Um, but the finale of the fight was where it was at, mm. absolutely. And I'm really glad yeah. that the they ended up coming to the cl conclusion of, oh, going in the water was a terrible idea. Oh yeah, they both like, made mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That was that was rather cool. They both realized, crap, I made a mistake. This, this was a bad idea. Done that. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a rare thing for mm -hmm. main characters in JoJo's, right? Because they, it's always, or not always, but it's so often. You know, planning around your plan, and you and know, rule and, of cool, and right in three hundred IQ plays and all that stuff. Right. Um. So, occasionally making a mistake. Occasionally making a mistake is is nice to see, especially when they acknowledge it. Yes. Because sometimes what'll end up happening is is we'll think that they made a mistake. The plot doesn't acknowledge right. that it was a mistake. And yeah. Somehow it all ends up working out anyway. Exactly. So we kind of go, oh, wait a minute. We, mm -hmm. we lost a little bit of immersion right. there, and by, but in this case, they acknowledged yeah. it. Yeah, and by going into the water, it's they had a plan, you know, so there was a reason that they went into the water, and they're like, okay, yeah, you know. Um, but right. then once they realized it's a bad idea, now, as long as the decision of why they went into the water in the first place is right. sold, yeah. then now it's just, okay, we just made it more difficult for them, yep. aka it'll be more satisfying when they overcome it. Exactly. Um, and and thus here we are. We yep. now have the data disc. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to learn the the boss's identity probably really soon. Yep. However, in this end credit scene, this is something I thought yeah. was a little bit interesting. Mm -hmm. The idea that the boss is kind of tracking Risotto. Yep. Who seems to be essentially the the big bad uh -huh. of the Hitman Squad, and he's saying, "Oh, oh, dang, he's coming to Venezia." Okay. All right, but the way he says it of either they'll take out Risotto or mm -hmm. he'll take out them, either way, I guess it's good. Like he said something to the equivalent of it made it seem like he didn't care who right. won out as long as they basically, yeah, oh, uh, he says. Uh, one way or another, my woes will be taken care of. Right, if he's taken out by Bucciarati's crew, it's all the same. One way or another, my woes will be taken care of. And I wasn't, like, uh, there was a part of me that was thinking, like, okay, um, I'm so good that it doesn't matter, right? I'll be able to take him out regardless. Like, even if he does get to me, I'll still be able to beat him. Mm. But, but yeah, it, it's like, okay, is there something, some mm. reason that he doesn't like or trust Bucciolati and his crew? Like, maybe he realizes that they're not quite cut out for all this crime stuff. You know, mm. so so he's trying to like set them up for for failure. You know, well, okay. I mean, like a lot of them are. Yeah, like what am I talking about? Um, yeah, but but here's another way to look at it. It's, mm -hmm. it's I think it's way simpler than that. The boss is breaking one of his rules with regards to Trish. He's setting up a group of people that will then end up knowing his identity. That is not one oh, of his right. yeah. rules that yeah. he's okay with. Oh, yep, there you go. Yeah. So he mm -hmm. needs these two groups to kill each other off, regardless of whether or not right. their objective is completed. Yeah, and if anything, he'll just get more than he bargained for of like, oh, crap. Maybe okay. I have to personally kill like three of them or Right, something. and and they've all survived so far. I was hoping a few of them would die. Like, right, like right. they're up against some really strong opponents. Right, and, exactly. And smart opponents, you know, like... <laughs> Damn it! How did none of them die? Right, like maybe there's an aspect of him not knowing anything about Jorno, mm -hmm. and the fact that Jorno is there—the wild card, yeah. the wild card that no one really mm -hmm. expected. Yep, his standability is ridiculously strong. And he has saved multiple members of the yep. crew mm -hmm. thus far because of his ability. Oh yeah. So 
uh, we could end up in a situation where maybe they meet the boss. They've defeated the sure. whole Hitman squad. Mm -hmm. Everything's fine. They, yep. they pass over Trish. And the boss basically needs to make a decision of, uh -huh. do I upgrade some of these people and sure. maybe turn them against each other? You know, where I basically, like, bring uh -huh. up... Uh, As if that would happen. <laughs> well, no. Yeah. Like, let's think about this here for a second. Abakio uh -huh. is very, like, at least aware of the fact that you know, Jorno is new. Uh huh. We literally had a thematic thing brought up of which kappa would you serve, Mista? Uh, that is that is true. And then we have that the idea true. that um, the the boss, you know, probably doesn't want his organization to be replaced by someone else. You know, he he right. wouldn't just be like, yes, Jorno, you definitely did very uh -huh. well. Like, uh, let's let's well, let's switch everything up, and we'll no longer sell drugs to kids. You well, know? but if if he if he does want to basically make it so that there's no no ties back to him, that could be one of the ways that um, Jorno is able to properly get the rest of the crew on his side because mm. he's he's confided a bit. United in them against a greater threat. Right? Yeah. Well, and and it's a personal threat if he's going to. He's he's gonna he's gonna try and get us all killed. So we need to take him out, and then you know there you go. It's just sure. it's just one more one more fight, right? But then the question is, mm -hmm. what does Bucciarati think about all that? Yeah, yeah. What do they all think about all that? I yeah. think the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've almost I almost hope this happens. Yeah, I think the biggest problem for the ending part of this story mm -hmm. is that the Hitman Squad is not the final problem. Right, the boss is obviously. Mm -hmm. But before that, before that, you probably have to get everyone on the program of, you know, sure. we're doing this. Yeah. I don't think everyone's going to automatically be on the program. Abakio is certainly going to need some, uh, an adjustment well, period. Well, well, I don't think Abakio is actually necessarily not, the, like, loyal to the boss specifically. I think it's more that he's suspicious of Jorno being a... Sure. Being someone that's not um, uh -huh. fully loyal with the group. Right. Which is true. That's just that's just the truth there. Yep. So if they find a way to have the group turn on itself, yeah, there's some very interesting dynamics that could come well, about. I don't think that's necessarily going to work. Uh huh. But um, yeah, and and they did see the idea of at least Giorno and Bucciolati being at odds potentially. In mm -hmm. that Mista was was thinking of Giorno more as his capo in that moment which if they did then turn who would side with who and would it be chaotic and what would happen and all that stuff right um, but yeah yeah i think if anything butcherati would actually be the one that would immediately stop the conflict before it even happened because he's the kind of person that would actually care so much about the group that he wouldn't let basically some kind of civil war happen Mm -hmm. Like he would, he would, he would stand in the path of bullets essentially if it meant that the group stayed right. together. Yeah, like that's that's the kind of person he is. Mm -hmm. he, he he seems like that kind of a a good leader in that yep. regard. But um, there's the other bit that the boss might actually just be on the move. That's true. And yeah, like, yeah. What's he doing? Right. How can they go and meet him if? Like, I mean, I guess he could leave a clue behind or something, but... Well, I, I think I think it's just the question of he seems to be ridiculously actually nervous about Risotto. Yes. Like, he's actually yeah. tracking him intentionally. Mm -hmm. not, right, not him the squad, specifically. Him yeah. specifically. Cause, yeah. Because uh, Malone is still out there. And he doesn't right. give a crap about Malone, apparently. Yeah. yeah. So my guess is that Risotto is, like, ridiculously strong. Mm -hmm. And Risotto will probably be the equivalent of the Vanilla Ice... Of this, yeah, of this yeah, part, I'm thinking, and he'll kill one or two of them. Like that's that's my no, guess. No, I think I think this is going to be one of the situations where none of the Joe Bros die. Oh, you think they're all going to make it all the way to the end? I think they're all going to make it all the way to the end because Dang. it's because it's the idea of the found family. Oh, but so so then oh. it's it's amidst the turmoil mm. of the fact that okay, and and sort of the 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 contradiction of the family among criminals, right? Sure, that that they're that it's all going to be okay right okay like i feel like this has had a much bigger power of friendship like theme than in any of the previous parts really. any of them well okay mm. Mm. Uh, 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 no yeah no i don't yeah. think so i think i think certain parts of part three and part four edge out this over so thus far but that's probably because we haven't gotten to the finale stuff yet maybe but one. like i i mean parts of part three possibly we but, still we still haven't seen basically the group 
too much really working as the full group. That's uh-huh. my main thing is that part three had like so many parts where it was just the whole group working and wandering together and that you felt that power of friendship way more in that instance. Yeah, someone would be highlighted well, to do their awesome thing. Right. That, well, Polnareff being a, uh-huh. a, a, a baka or something. Yes, yes. But but I would say mm-hmm. even then in part four, you had moments like with Shigechi. Right. That like I, I'm not I'm not so much talking about the the idea of the, the group aspect, but just the idea of that it's that mm. their bonds are what help them pull through because mm. i i feel like i feel like there was plenty of stuff there was plenty of friendships in the previous parts uh-huh. but the 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 power of friendship itself oh, wasn't as much okay. of a deciding factor in the, the mechanic outcome of the itself. conflicts yeah yeah and i feel like we've gotten a pretty good mm. amount of that so far so i i, I hope i guess that i'll continues. hold off judgment on that then because i i don't i don't really i don't really measure that too much mm-hmm. But 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 I see what you're what you're getting at though because it is different than the actual yeah it's relationship bonds themselves. Mm-hmm. But uh, but oh yeah. boy, we're we're getting closer to the end. Well, we're we're actually I would say at the halfway point now. Right. Uh, officially, this is the halfway uh, point. Yeah. Um, there's yeah. 39 uh, episodes in the part. So if we right. watched episode 19 just now, yeah, that's basically yep. 20 uh-huh. will be the halfway point. Right. And then finishing it will be just crazy to think about. So yeah. yeah awesome though like y'all thank you so much for watching this episode's reaction and discussion if you want to see the next episode's reaction and discussion right now go check out the link in the description below for our patreon you can get on early access there you can watch full-length timer reactions there and all this comes with discord access so you can chat with us and the community there about this show about anime in general you can also talk with jacob about the sci-fi novel that he wrote yeah so i wrote a sci-fi novel and it's really cool it's called battle lines if you want to get it the link's in the description to amazon where you can purchase it it's in both hardback and ebook for the u.s outside of the u.s only ebook because hard facts are difficult to ship but go get it yes if any of that interests you we'll see you there but until then we're semblance of sanity i'm caleb i'm jacob and we'll see you all next time